which I'll stand corrected if I'm mistaken. Some people, and maybe all of us, none of us deserve what God may do to us or for us or may speak to us. Don't ever feel like God has really pointed you out because you're above anybody else. God loves people. He wants to help people. And some of us probably deserve a spanking, really, as far as earning it. But God may show love and mercies and grace and speak to you in such a kind way and may even speak of the prospects you have right. but which you've not shown any signs of, of ever reaching that to up to the present. But it gives you a goal to shoot at. If God is interested in that thing being worked out in your life, then you are not to say, I really am a seize hole and they're recognizing my greatness. Well, we recognize God's greatness and God gets all the glory. But if God should bless you and you know you don't deserve it, well, you that think you deserve it, you're going to have to tell you that I don't deserve this because it's grace of God that grace. gives all gifts and all blessings. Yes, thank God. So we have no idea at this moment what Brother Clark may uh, say or do. This is a preliminary. He, he'll be led of God and... I'm not giving direction, but please don't go off on an ego trip if God has favored or blessed you today uh, by recognizing you because he, he wants to bless everybody from the worst person. He would have blessed Judas if it had been possible, even the worst. But Judas is too far gone. But still, uh, Jesus, he died for everybody and, and all people. So no matter who you are or where you come from, and really how undeserving you may feel. Just remember, it's, we're saved by grace through faith. Yes. And the ministration of the word and the gifts of the spirit uh, will be, be God working for our benefit. And uh, I learned to love Brother Clark quite quickly in Minden and in Lafayette, Louisiana, where Brother John and I both, my daughter in Lafayette, both had the chance of uh, observing. Uh, Brother Barnes, uh, that I've all, 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 always laid for a long time, is the greatest man I've ever met, uh, and is the greatest man I've ever met, as far as I know, I don't always know. But uh, when Brother Barnes uh, uh, moves under God in his, in his careful and faithful way, it's, it's really, a, really a, a boost to many of us who've learned to trust his, his judgment and the spirit and uh, he spoke to me so glowingly of, uh, of Brother Clark that I had to go down and, and see Brother Clark and I had to go down and see him again and it was marvelous what the Lord himself had done. Uh, Brother Clark is now from Virginia, city of Virginia. Uh, he will be a tired man don't try to find his telephone number or his room. Don't, don't, don't do that. If God wants to bless you, he'll bless you right here in this place as if you have an opportunity to be here. Don't, don't, don't drag the man down. You, today he'll have two services this morning and tonight. Sometimes it goes up to midnight. And if you don't think that's hard, I had weddings the last four hours and a half yesterday all together, if you don't think that's hard, just to, just in weddings. But this is a spiritual drain here also, so let's consider the man, please. Uh, even though you think your, your question is the most important on earth, well, it may be to you, but there's lots of people who have important matters, so let's not really wear him out, and, uh, and let's let him guide the service. And, and, and he does not want you to tell him what's wrong with you, that is no help to him. So don't try to say, I have a pain in my left toenail and I'm struggling in my, in my right mole, you know, or, and I have a battle over uh, a blackhead, you know, a little while. Don't, don't bring all the details. Whatever the Lord wants him to know, moreover, if he doesn't cover all of your ills at one time, if God leads him, there still may be another time. So don't feel like uh, you're being neglected, omitted by any means, because the Lord will do exactly what ought to be done, no more, no less. Praise God. Just a few little warnings, because the man's going to give himself to God and to service, 
and uh, you can become a pest no matter how important you think you are and your needs may be you can become just a virtual pest praise the lord that's and while he may not cut you off i will right at the gap here so he'll have a chance to get, keep his rest and be strong enough to continue in all the five services remember 6 30 tonight but come ahead of time for prayer tomorrow night seven o'clock tuesday night seven o'clock wednesday night seven o'clock five services and please believe you, believe me, it's not an eight-hour shift. One hour of his ministry will be just about like a whole day with you if you work a whole day. It's tough service, but that's exactly the people God calls to render tough spiritual service. We're dealing with uh, so many things, so uh, I'm trying to get you to cooperate with him, and, uh, and I hope you don't uh, duck around and say, I'll do otherwise because uh, you don't have to do that. If you believe God, God will call his attention to where you are and whatever your needs are when that time comes. If he elects to preach only this morning and not into the spiritual gifts, that's up to him. We're not gonna force him into anything. We're just gonna pray to God, thy will be done, oh God. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Would, uh, if you have all these announcements here in clear in mind, shall we stand as we introduce Brother Freddie Clark from the great state of Virginia? And Catch you off guard, Brother Clark? You'll like this man. Praise God. You'll like him. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. And we're glad to be in church this morning, are we not? Amen. Great things are in store, and I don't know what time they, we usually get out on Sunday mornings when we're done. When we're done. <clears throat> but we'll try to be done as soon as possible and just give you a foretaste of what to expect tonight and all the first part of this week. Great things are in store in the name of the Holy Child Jesus. Let's lift our hands for about 30, 45 seconds. Just praise him. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Wonderful Counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, great I am, and great eternal wonder. Ooh, Lily of the Valley, Rose of Sharon, bright and morning star, altogether lovely one, and fairest of 10,000. I praise thee this hour and this very moment. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter and I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will <clears throat> while I'm waiting yielded and still thank you jesus for the blood glory to god in the highest honor peace goodwill toward men unto you is born this day in the city of david a savior which is christ the lord all oh, the governments upon his shoulder all the rainbow is on the other shoulder all oh, his voice like many waters hair white like wool on his head many crowns his eyes a flame of fire his feet burning as brass in a furnace Clothed about the paps with a golden girdle of an ephod clear onto his feet. Ah, oh, name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords, out of his mouth go a two-edged sword, clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. Whoa, oh, he doth speak, and the earth doth listen. Ah, oh, he shall ride and descend from the white horse, and the white horse army behind him. I thank you, Jesus, for fine linen and clean and white. Whoa, oh, which is the righteousness of the saints. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to the Lamb slain forevermore. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord. Praising my God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God, yeah. Thank God. Praising, praising, praising. That was the clap offering. Now I'll just give him a wave offering. It's found in Leviticus. It is also found in Granite City. Hallelujah. 
And the double wave offering is for all double portion candidates this morning. A who's who of Granite City, Illinois. We see what you came for. Hallelujah to God. <laughs> and while you're yet standing, let's read from Matthew, the very first gospel. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 2. Matthew 11 and 2. Now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus and answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And read the last verse together. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Better read that again. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Lord, I thank you this morning for the reading of the word. May it be rich and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Pierce now to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit in joints and marrow. And be a discerner of the thoughts and intents of every heart. I thank you for answers that are arriving by the moment. <clears throat> and even now, some are advanced enough in thee to receive their healing in their seat. For he sent his word and healed them. Lord, we receive the engrafted word of God even as we are taught, even now. I thank you. Amen. Seated you may be. <coughs> Praise the Lord. I believe I'll just come on down to your level. <coughs> Start with. There's nothing to be afraid of. If you fear God, nothing left to fear. Fear is actually faith in the devil, but perfect love casts out all fear. Let the love of God be shed abroad in your heart today by the Holy Ghost. We could pray the prayer of faith at this time because there's quite an unction here today. On the other hand, we don't want you healed for two or three weeks. We want you healed forever. We want it to be a permanent work. Therefore, we conclude we must declare the Word of God for God does not confirm Time, Life, Newsweek Magazine, and the Reader's Digest. He confirms His Word. Now the Spirit and the Word agree to set men and women free. He cast out spirits by His Word. He spoke the word through the miles and the work was done. He sent his word and healed them. Many times I suffer, said Paul, as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word is not bound. You may sit here tighter than a drum this morning, all tied up and bound, but God's word's not bound. It's a loosening agent. It'll liberate you as you receive it. <laughs> oh, thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. But it's a requirement that you must get your mouth in it and your heart in it. How did you get to be a Roman citizen? Oh, little Apostle Paul said the soldier, I paid a great price for my citizenry. And Paul looked up into his eyes and said, Well, you see, sir, I was free born. I was been born free. You've been born again. You're liberated. That which is first is natural. Look at your old body. It's doomed to failure. It's got to go to the grave. It must perish. It dies daily. But the second time, said Corinthians 15, the second time is spiritual. It's supernatural. Oh, it's eternal. It's successful. So get back on the horse that threw you and try again. If you have enough to you to try one more time, it'll work the next time. Because the second time is spiritual. The first time round is always carnal or natural. And wondering why the preacher will bend his ear from time to time, he's listening for a response. Amen, oh me or oh my, one of them will fit you. 
microphone is rather portable. We can come down and pick out the quiet spot and preach if we have to. <laughs> and of course, there's no cord on this microphone, which means that nobody in the building can escape us this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, glory to God. I love it. Thank God that the second time is spiritual. So we're having a good time this morning, but wait till tonight. Hallelujah to God. All right. We have read a text today concerning John the Baptist and his great revival down at the River Jordan. All of Israel came out to hear him. And what did you go out to see, cried Jesus? A reed shaking in the wind? Nothing unstable. Did you go out to see somebody clothed in fancy raiment? No, they're down at the king's palace. You went out to see a prophet. And behold, there was none born among women any greater than John the Baptist. Yet, said Jesus, he that's least in the kingdom of God shall be greater than John the Baptist. Would you like to be greater than the greatest prophet that ever lived? Then practice up on becoming the least in the kingdom. Humble yourself, and the Lord will walk with you. Humble yourself, and his praises will cheer you. You'll not walk with the proud or the scornful. Humble yourself and walk with God. In the backwards realm of the spirit, or I should say of the flesh, which is actually the backwards realm, if you want to go up, you must come down. If you want to live, you're going to die. And if you want to receive, you must give. If you want to be exalted, humble yourself. If you want to be the master of all, then be the servant of all. You that would like to be the head, be willing to be the tail. You that want to be first, then go ahead and be last. That's the only way it's going to work. And you that would like to be clean, Naaman, go jump in Jordan's mud and come out clean. It's like dressing in front of a mirror. You have to learn to dress backwards. If somebody takes your mirror, you can't get dressed. You want to be a spiritual success, then do it just the opposite of this dog-eat-dog -dog society. Right. Hallelujah to God. Well, it was a great prophet, this John the Baptist. In fact, he was the very first Baptist that ever lived. Amen. All Israel came out to his banks to hear him, and the poor folks listened to his message. And when he preached, as he claimed the baptism of water unto repentance for the remission of sins, they went down and were baptized of John. The religious people stood on the bank and said, we don't need none of that stuff. We have Abraham to our father. We know God spoke to Abraham. It's funny, they did not live back in Abraham's day. How did they really know that God was talking to Abraham other than they read it in a book? I suppose it should be a practical theology. Even right now, you should have a salvation that works as real that you can feel. If you had one you couldn't feel, then you might lose it and not know you lost it. Oh, how many knows you can feel the Holy Ghost this morning? Oh, hallelujah. That's a present-day proof that what you got is reality. Glory to the Lord. The only one that was ever living in Abraham's time was the one that John was preaching. And that Jesus came along after a while and cried, Before Abraham was, I am. You're not 50 years old. Have you seen Abraham? It's not important that I've seen Abraham, said Jesus. What is important is that Abraham saw me. And when he did, he was glad. Oh, glory. He became my friend. Abraham, the friend of God. Glory to God. So a great revival was going on, and the poor had the gospel preached to them and heard the word gladly, as they always do. The religious, the pompous, the proud, the wealthy have a very difficult time entering into the kingdom of God. It's easier for the camel to go through a needle's eye than for them to enter in. Now, the needle's eye was in the Jerusalem wall. Camels could get through it, but they had to strip down, take every pack off their back. As they were drugged through, they were safe for the night through the needle's eye. And if you really want to enter into the kingdom of God, you may have to strip down. 
and lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset you and run with patience the race that is set before you looking on at Jesus the author and the finish of your faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despised the shame and is sat down on the right hand of the majesty hallelujah Boy. now God's word will not only feed you but it will give you a bath how many are already eat, feeding and feasting on the things of God's Word? Where he has the table spread, where the saints of God are fed. On the other hand, Christ loved the church and gave himself forth that he may sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the Word. So while you're listening to the Word of God being preached today, you're having a bath, a very bright shower. You're being cleansed by the same Word. Don't you feel clean all of a sudden? All those scroungy spots that you have accumulated by rubbing shoulders with the heathen all week seem to have disappeared. God taking you to the cleaners. <laughs> Leaving his church without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. Oh, hallelujah to God. So the revival increases down at the River Jordan and every day that John preaches, he preaches practical Christianity, if you have two coats, give your brother one. If you get slapped on one cheek, turn the other side. And if they compel you to walk a mile, walk twain. And uh, things like this was the same type of gospel that Jesus preached when he took up where John left off. John was a forerunner, and it wasn't no different gospel. It was the same gospel. And uh, when John preached, repent, the kingdom of heaven is in hand. Wasn't long before Jesus was preaching the same thing. Repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I'm glad that we're workers together of Christ. I'm glad that uh, we're one place, one mind, one accord. That's when Pentecost always falls. I'm glad that we're in harmony. And that we're members in particular of the self-same body of which he's the head. Maybe you're the fingernail, maybe you're the toe, I don't know what you are, but if you're in the place you ought to be, you'll feel good. You'll know where you fit in. You'll realize that you belong. you have peace. you have joy. you have contentment. When one suffers, we all suffer. If you're in the same body. Are you by one spirit all baptized into one body? Putting us all in the same family. They introduced me at one church, Mr. Clark. I wondered who they were talking to. I looked around, and I began to feel for the same kindred spirit and couldn't find it. So then I understood why they called me Mr. Most places I go, they call me brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, thank the Lord. That means we're all in the same family. And that always happens where we all have the same kindred spirit. We're kin. <clears throat> Thank the Lord. A great crowd came down to John's baptism. And there great things were happening and great messages were preaching. And of course the lines were divided. The religious and the proud and all would have nothing to do with it. But the people who had a need entered in and God met their need. Even though John worked no miracle, he was still the greatest prophet ever lived according to Jesus' lips. He did not see anything in the spirit other than the symbolical bodily shape of a dove that fell upon Christ when he appeared at his baptism. Now, there were three marks of an Old Testament prophet. You either prophesied, which is all that John did, or you saw things in the spirit. And if you see in that spiritual realm, you were called a seer. Those particular prophets were called a seer. Now, this is a heavy definition, so brace yourself. A seer is one who sees. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or thirdly, they work the miraculous, work miracles. These were the three marks of Old Testament prophets. In fact, there was only three ministries also in the Old Testament, prophet, priest, and king. There were none of the Old Testament characters that were all three of them. The rare exception was two of them, and if you were called at all, it was usually to one of them. The exception, of course, was Saul, who prophesied between backslidings. 
while he was yet a king. Then there was David who was a king who, well, he prophesied too, but he was never a priest. He always needed the ephod and the high priest to inquire of the Lord. Now there was Samuel. He was a priest and he was a prophet, but he was not a king. So there, the exceptions were bridging the gap between two Old Testament ministries, but were not all three. Now Jesus came to earth as a prophet. He's now in heaven as a priest and he will return again as a king. Have you never heard how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, both prophet, priest, and king? Hallelujah. So we have somebody with us today who fulfills everything. His name is Jesus. He is the antitype of all types and the fulfillment of all dreams. And he appeared at John's baptism and the gift of prophecy that worked upon John suddenly enveloped him and he cried behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world now they've been waiting for days to hear an endorsement all the converts had been waiting for months to have John point the finger to the Messiah to the anointed one and this particular day by the unction of God it happened <laughs> and it happened before in the Jerusalem temple at his uh, very circumcision and eight days old Simeon one witness, a man. Anna, witness number two, and in the voice of two witnesses, every word shall be established, a woman. Came by the Holy Ghost into the temple of all the babies that day being circumcised, they were led directly to the Christ child. Now when the Holy Ghost begins to move upon you, you will be led. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, and you not only be led here to church, to the temple, but you'll be led right straight to the Christ child, right to where Jesus is. It not, might not be a very big thing, but it's growing. I said, there's something growing in you, the slow and orderly growth of the kingdom of God, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. Ah, yes. Don't give me a Jonah's gourd. It's too quicky. Too much of a jiffy. I don't want 7-Eleven gospel, nor bargain basement religion, nor a quick fix. Jonah's gourd came up in a night, and it perished in a night. I don't mind it being a small thing, as long as it keeps growing. And the Spirit of God led them both to a very small child, but he was growing every day in wisdom and stature and in knowledge and in favor with God and with man. Hallelujah. Well, praise of the Lord. Now again, being led by the Spirit, behold the Lamb. Now, some people observed this and followed him, like Philip and Andrew, for instance. They followed him that day to see where he lodged. They followed through on it. But the gift was real in the river because the revival heat was high. Anybody can believe God and shout the victory and all things are going to the third heaven. Everything is in high gear. It's easy to ride any kind of a bandwagon at that moment. There was no way that John could doubt his gift of revelation and Jesus came by revelation. He was the revelation of God. He was God revealed. He's coming again in the second coming in the revelation of Jesus Christ, which is known as the second coming. Even the book of Revelation says it's the revelation of St. John the Divine, but it's really the revelation of Jesus Christ. And his second coming, which is the revelation. He may come in the rapture for the saints and translate his people, but when he comes to earth and every eye beholds him, that is called the revelation. They look on him whom they've pierced. Glory to God. Every ounce of his ministry was based on revelation. He never did anything except he knew it ahead of time. He knew what he was going to do before he did it. He knew he was going to the cross. He knew who was going to betray him. He knew what lay in man. He had no need that any man tell him what lay in man. He knew what lay in man. Again it said, and Jesus perceiving their thoughts. And again it said, Jesus knowing their hearts. Again it said, uh, there's a man in the tree. Zacchaeus is his name. Come on down. I'm going to save you today. Behold an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. How do you know me? Nathaniel, I knew you when you were sitting underneath the fig tree. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Of course we pay our taxes. Peter, go catch the first fish. There'll be a thousand fish in the school, but don't worry. The Spirit of God will force the right fish up to your hook 
that you will catch and the tax money will be in its mouth. The Father worketh hitherto and I work, Jesus said. What does that mean? That means where the Spirit of God is moving, there's where he goes and moves. It would be foolish for me to pray for some dry hide over here if the anointing was moving on somebody over here. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Do you love his word today? Thank God, thank God. As he bent down and wrote their sins in the sand, the oldest accuser observed his own pedigree first and walked out and said, I will not accuse that little woman taken in adultery no more. She has one sin. It looks to me like I've got 27. <laughs> Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And right on down to the youngest, they read their sins in the sand and walked on out, no longer accusing. When you find out where you come from, when you remember from the pit from which you've been digged, who you once was, you're not so prone to criticism. There's somebody who's writing books all the time right now, and he knows your pedigree. In fact, he knows everything in the lives of those men who had to just say, I'm worse off than she is. See you later. So let us humble ourselves, and God will do great things for us. Glory to God. Ah, oh, thank God for his mighty word. On and on it went, but he never did anything except he knew what he was doing beforehand. And forewarned is forearmed. Foreknowledge will keep you from hanging yourself. Elisha told the king of Israel what the king of Syria said in his bedchamber. Thus the king of Israel saved his skin time after time and was not ambushed. Do you want to have revelation of God's word today? Now if you have a revelation that is according to scripture, it's fine. Kosher. You see, there is the Logos, the written word. Then there is the Rhema, the spoken word. Someone said, all we have is Genesis to Revelation. That's true. That's all we have that we can really depend on. But we're making history and writing Bible this morning. It's being recorded in heaven, and you're going to read it someday in heaven. Every idle word, every idle deed, every good word, every good deed. Everything that happens, there's going to be an account of it. We'll understand it better by and by. We'll tell the story of how we overcome. Well, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Except as far as this world is concerned, all we can possibly digest is Genesis to Revelation. And then most people can't even handle that. But I suppose that of all the things that Jesus ever did in a three and a half year ministry was written down in a book, the world itself could not contain the volumes of those books. That's what John said. Hmm? Uh, Many other things that Jesus both began to do and to say and to teach, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that believing, ye might have life through his name. So there's many things that could have been written, but these are written, as we have it in our laps this morning, the book. Therefore, every apostrophe and every exclamation mark and every period and every genealogy and every boring phrase is potent is powerful and if you can get the revelation on it it'll set your soul free if you can begin to re receive a concept of what it means it'll do something to you and jesus never operated except by revelation and he was introduced by revelation behold the lamb well this prophet john also prophesied he must increase i must decrease but be careful what you prophesy and what you say, even if you're not prophesying. But by your words, you're justified, or by your words, you're condemned. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Hang that man. Set that man free. See the powers in your words? There's only two things you're ever going to be judged concerning, and that is deeds and words. Just the only two things, deeds and words. <laughs> what you say and what you do. Isn't that right? Glory to God. Thank my God. And so here is John prophesying, I'm going to be decreasing, but he said, I never thought it was going to end like this, rotting away in a Herodian jail. I can't even get outside my cell. I'm locked in by bars. I, maybe I shouldn't have prophesied that. 
Amen. Don't ever say you're not going to do such, such and such a thing because that's usually what you're going to have to wind up doing. If you won't do it, just hush. Don't say nothing. Don't let the Lord don't. Just say, Lord, I'm here. Whatever you want me to do. But if you, if you stand up and say, I would never do such and such a thing, that's what he'll have to make you do to finally get your will broke. It's not that he delights in making you do one thing as opposed to another, but he's got to do something with this will of yours so that his will can replace it. Isn't it true? Well, thank God. So now he has a dilemma. He wakes up on the wrong side of the bed of a chip on his shoulder in the flesh, doubting. Everybody say doubting. doubting. The greatest prophet that ever lived woke up doubting. Now, I mean, don't feel quite so bad about yourself. If I'd asked you before I give you this statement, uh, how many people ever doubted, I couldn't have got too many hands to go up because you know how Pentecostal folks are. <clears throat> Can't get them to agree on nothing or vote on nothing or <clears throat> admit nothing or confess nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. But now if I asked you how many ever doubted, how many could raise your hand? Right, because now that you know the greatest prophet that ever lived doubted, you don't feel so bad about yourself saying, hey, I guess I can admit uh, uh, I doubted once or twice. Uh, I don't have such peer pressure on me right now. <laughs> Say hallelujah. <laughs> well, I love him. So now here is John wondering, I've got to check this Jesus fella out again. I, I'm not sure. I'm doubting my own gift. Have you ever doubted your own gift? Have you ever doubted that what you've done was true, right, or thus saith the Lord? Yes. Wonder if I was in the flesh, I wonder if I was in the spirit. Now, the greatest prophet ever lived thought that way. Uh, uh, don't feel quite so bad about your own situation. He said, I'm going to send my disciples. I, I hate to be in this bind. I'd rather check him out myself, but they won't let me leave the jailhouse. And so now I've got to learn to trust. Most people do not want to learn to trust. It's too difficult for them. One day you're going to be paralyzed on a hospital bed of a doctor looking over you with a great big knife in his hand, and you're not going to have enough capability to blink your eyelids, and you're going to learn to trust. You're going to lay there like a brain inside of a corpse and learn to trust. You're going to be numb from head to foot and can't do a thing to help yourself. One day you might even be sitting in a, a wheelchair in an old age home and someone taking care of you and you're going to have to learn to trust. Say amen. It's an awful situation to be caught inside these prison bars of bone and have to learn to trust. <laughs> You're captive today in your carcasses. You're just a soul sitting here housed in a crust. Some are more crusty than others. <laughs> but one day you're going to escape this old prison house because you trusted. He trusted his disciples. Now comes the test that I teach my disciples right. The people over whom I have been responsible and I have prepared them for their generation, for their day. I wonder if I did a proper job. I'm going to find out if I did a good job or not because I've got to depend upon their decision to discern Jesus, come back and tell me whether or not it is the Christ and whether or not I missed in my gift when I endorsed him. Now it's one thing to be down at the river in high revival, believe in God. You can believe him for anything. But when you're all by yourself, all alone at home in a little old room with four walls around you, four walls surround you, closing in upon you, can you still believe and keep from doubting in such an environment? That's when you really learn to trust and say, disciples, go check him out and come back and tell me. <laughs> well, now the disciples came to where Jesus was. And they watched him minister for a while. And as they looked upon, Jesus prophesied. And of course, they all had preacher religion because they were followers of John the Baptist. They were John's disciples. Yes. Amen. Amen. Paul, passing through the upper coast of Ephesus one day, found John's disciples. 
I said, have you got the Holy Ghost? Never heard tell of the Holy Ghost. Didn't even know there was such a thing. Well, there is such a thing, said Paul. And when they heard that, they said, well, tell us about it. He said, well, John was just prophesying of Jesus, who is the one who sends the Holy Ghost. It's line upon line, precept upon precept, step by step, no stopping place in God. When they heard that, they got baptized in the name of the Lord and came up out of the water speaking in tongues. Twelve of them became the twelve pillars of the Ephesian church, the, the church of Ephesus. Now, these were John's disciples. At least they were open-minded, although a little bit bigoted. They had been trained by John, and of course they thought nobody could ever surpass John, although there was a margin for possibility there. John always kept talking about somebody else. And now they were checking on somebody else, and as Jesus prophesied, they said, hmm, John can do that. That sounds like people would preach a religion. People that are following a man should not be. I'm a palm of a Paulus, I'm of Cephas. Well, said Paul, was Christ divided? Uh, was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? No, he couldn't uh, say that. He said, if you're bound and determined to follow me, he said, Paul, then follow me as I follow Christ. Didn't he say so? So anything of two heads is deformed, and there's only one head to the body. Glory to God. So now the disciples are watching uh, Jesus, and he begins to see things in the Spirit. And they stroke their beards and say, my. John never did that. Amen. Then he started working the miraculous. Now, you know the Bible says John worked no miracle. See, though he prophesied. And when he started working miracles and healing the sick and the blind, the deaf, and whatever, they said, my, everything John said about this man's the truth. Let's go back and tell John the good news. And they dashed back to the Herodian prison cell and told him, good news, John. What's that? Well, the first news is we're no longer your disciples. <laughs> we got converted today. We've been saved. You're not my disciples anymore. No, we found out that everything you said about this Jesus is the truth. Therefore, we can no longer be followers of the Baptist. Well, now, John was a Baptist. He's the greatest Baptist ever lived, but they couldn't follow the Baptist no more. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, while I'm on the subject, uh, you can't follow the Methodists. Or the Catholic, or the Lithuanian, or the Episcopalian, or the um, Unitarian, or the <coughs> Presbyterian, or the... Uh, Assembly of God, the Church of God, uh, the Pentecostals, the Heinz 57 varieties, and even the United Pentecostals. You have to follow Jesus, or you cannot be at first base. You haven't even got started. I mean, they were following John and all good intentions, but that wasn't enough. When they met Jesus, they had to start following him, and that made them Christian, Christ-like, disciples, followers of this in this case it was Christ no longer John so now they were followers of Christ that made them Christ like they were Christian they were Christ disciples they had now received salvation by faith Pentecost day had not arrived yet but they were as saved as they could be at the time because they were believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ and they were following him now that didn't set too well with John to start with until he can was convinced that what they had seen was just exactly what he'd prophesied. And when he realized that just because he got up in the flesh and in a bad mood, on the wrong side of the bed, a chip on his shoulder, kind of disgruntled, argumentative, moody, depressed, oppressed, didn't have nothing to do with the fact that when he was in the spirit, it was real. And when he was moving in God, it was true. And it was an exact science flowing in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now that shows me this morning you cannot go by feeling. You've got to go by faith. You cannot go by sight. You must go on in the Spirit. 
No matter what you feel like right now, grab old self by the scuff of the neck and say, look, flesh, get in the Holy Ghost and stay there. Hallelujah. If you walk in the Spirit, you make no provision for the flesh. Thank God. When they put the garment on at the wedding feast, that's the same as saying, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Didn't say put on the dog, put on airs, put on a show, put on a front. Act. He said put on Jesus. Put on Christ. Glory be to God. So now, before they left, Jesus cried over his shoulder and said, go and show John again. Now I believe it's some time has come for some of you Johns to get showed again. I'm going to have to get showed again. The things which you have seen and heard, and what you're to see and hear here this morning is to be propagated by you this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, the rest of your life. And if we're Pentecostals, we must believe in the supernatural and the demonstration of the power of God, or let us forget it, hang it up, go join some denomination uptown with the steeple, clean up to the sky, which is the closest thing to heaven in the whole church. Amen. 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 But don't come around saying you're Pentecost if you don't believe in the Holy Ghost, the gifts of the Spirit, signs and wonders, and the demonstration of God's gospel. The, Paul's gospel has never really been preached on earth today. Some said, I thought that we were all saved, baptized, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, but there's no stopping place in God. You cannot quit. When you are through preaching, you cannot close the book and say, well, let's go home. Anybody can do that. Let's not be wimps. Let's demonstrate. Let's prove. Let's give God a chance to show us. He'd, he'd be moving forever if we'd let him do it. Hallelujah. He'd be doing it every time if we wouldn't close him out. But too many times the menu is passed out at the door. It's all scheduled. It's all listed. What's got to be. And God has no time to fit in between the cracks. Hallelujah. Paul's gospel came in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. He said, your faith is not ever going to stand in the wisdom of men. If I have anything to do with it, it's going to stand in the power of God. He said, when I get through preaching, I demonstrate it or I'll not be preaching it. That is my gospel. If an angel from heaven preaches a different gospel than I preach, let it be accursed. If I come next year preaching a different gospel than I did last year, don't you listen to me either. This gospel works or we're going to forget it. Eat, drink, be merry, because tomorrow you die. Hang it up, try something else, go find something new. I keep looking for it to fail, but it doesn't. I have been weary many times in the 27 years. I've been a nonstop evangelist year after year, every night of my life. And just when I say, well, if it's not real tonight, I'm going to have an excuse to quit. It gets more real that night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praising the mighty name. And because it does, there's no rest for the weary. There's no stopping place. Paul's gospel came in demonstration. If we don't get some demonstration, you Pentecostals, we'll have demonstration. If we don't get some manifestation, we'll have man infestation. Man has been festering long enough. If we don't get an apostolic church, we're going to have an apostate church. We don't get Pentecost at any cost. We're going to wind up plenty crossed. We don't get back the upper room. We're just going to have a supper room on our hands. Isn't that the truth? Ah, oh, blessed be your name, Jesus. I love him, don't you? Oh, oh, rejoice just for a moment. Go and show John again things which you've seen and heard. The blind see. The deaf hear, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed. Oh, hallelujah. The dead are raised and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who service shall not be offended in me. That's my little text this morning in conclusion. There's a special blessing for every one of you today. If you cannot be offended in Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that a plain, simple little truth? Just as long as you don't get your back up and your fur up and your dander up, 
Just as long as you don't get up the myth tree and upset and frustrated, tormented, unbelieving, doubtful, antagonistic, fighting spirit, as long as you cannot be offended in any sense of the word, you can be blessed today. And since the power of preaching is this, you must receive according to the way the message is delivered to receive that day in that service from that message in that moment. And I'm sorry, you have to be rid of all offense today if you expect to be blessed today. Because that's the way it is being preached today. Some other texts may take a different approach, but this one has taken this approach. Therefore, you've got to get rid of your offense. How many came to be blessed? You can be blessed. God's got a blessing of every one of your names on it. Your name is on your own blessing, and you will be blessed on, unless, of course, you're blessing proof. But you shouldn't be. Not after the word of God hath been declared this morning. Hallelujah to the Lord. Blessed is she, whosoever shall not be offended in me. That means no matter what Jesus wants to say, the Holy Ghost is the preacher. No matter what he wants to do, don't be offended. If somebody is preaching to you that seems a little bit strange to you, don't let that offend you. If you get called out, count it a big fat compliment, don't let it offend you. The word church by definition means the called out ones. Just a possibility you might belong to the church after all. If you get hands laid on your head, don't be offended. If you run the aisle, don't be offended. What if I get slain out in the spirit, Brother Freddie? Well, don't let it offend you. And you'll be blessed. Well, what if I stay five or ten minutes longer than I'm used to? Don't let it offend you. There's a blessing on tap for you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Brother Freddie, I can hardly wait to see the eyes of the blind open. Well, they will. On the other hand, if they don't, and you rather can see the things we're preaching, it would be more profitable to you. And the service would be better because of that, for your sake and God's sake. If you can only see, look into the perfect law of liberty, behold your face in a glass and look beyond the mist. No longer have to see through a glass darkly. That would be worth the whole meeting to me. That wouldn't offend me. That's a better sight. A greater sight. And if that happens rather than your cataract falling on the ground, don't let it offend you. And you'll be blessed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, glory to God in the high. I can hardly wait for the deaf to hear, Brother Freddie. Well, they will, but if they don't, and you rather have an ear to hear what the Spirit would say to the church this morning, that would not offend me. Therefore, I'd be blessed. Hallelujah. Well, I can hardly wait for the people to jump out of their wheelchairs and the lame walk. Well, if you could only learn to walk this morning in the Spirit, walk in love. Walk circumspectly. Walk not as other Gentiles walk. Walk worthy of the vocation whereunto you have been called. Walk in the light as his in the light and have fellowship one of another. I wouldn't be offended and I'd be blessed. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Jesus still calls to John's disciples and said, go and show John again. Tell him. But the blind see and the deaf hear and the lame walk. And the lepers are cleansed. Oh, I can hardly wait for the lepers to get cleansed. Did you know, friends, if you want to see lepers cleansed in this meeting, you must bring lepers to this meeting. Hello. Does that make any sense to you? By the same token, that's the same way of saying, you want to see sinners saved, you've got to bring sinners to church. I know you want to see the altars filled with sinners, but if they're not here, you can't save the saints over and over and over and over and over and over. You understand? Hallelujah. Leprosy is a great type of sin. If you could just be cleansed of all those spots upon your garment today, that wouldn't offend me and I'd be blessed. Uh, the dead 
raised. Oh, I can hardly wait to see the dead raised. If 13 corpses don't come out of their caskets this morning and you could just come alive and receive eternal life and life more abundantly and life everlasting, that wouldn't offend me. I'd be blessed. Oh, you see, we must extract offense to be blessed. Bless God, she's sitting here again today. Ugh. Rubs my fur the wrong way. Why does he always rub me? Well, have you ever considered God may want you shined up? Are <laughs> oh, you listening to me? There's nothing like a lump of coal under pressure to turn into a diamond. There's nothing like Mother Lode being in the very heart of the earth and the biggest pearls at the bottom of the sea. The greater the pressure, the greater caliber of miracle. Hallelujah to God. One preacher told me, he said he knew his church was going up in the rapture. And I said, how do you know? Well, he said, the Bible says, the dead in Christ shall rise first. <laughs> Two paramedics came down to the church. They heard somebody died in the service. Seemed like they carried out half the congregation before they found the corpse. <laughs> if you don't see the dead raised this morning, if you could just receive his life, hmm, that wouldn't offend me now, and I'd be blessed. Back in the 1950s, we had the great move called the Voice of Healing, and it fizzled toward the beginning of the 60s. In fact, I was at the last Voice of Healing Convention in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, underneath the tent in 1961 or two, one of those years. The reason it fizzled was because the concentrated attention was centered on healings and miracles instead of souls. God only works a miracle to win a soul. He only goes through what you understand to give to you what you cannot comprehend. He only begins at your aches and pains and at the level of your suffering so he can take you into a greater place with him than ever before. And it's not a contest of who can have the greatest miracle in their ministry. It's a question of God will use the gifts of the Spirit and the power of God to reach souls for eternity, which is his bottom line. Your old carcass can be sick and still go to heaven, but if you're sick in your soul, you'll go to hell. <clears throat> The Lord is moving today for one reason, to give you what you need in the inner man, the eternal man, the man that's going to last forever, not the one that's going to perish in a few years. Uh, you could be healed today and you probably need to be healed again next year. Next year. And always needing something in the flesh, but let's get something eternal and permanent in the spirit. Because the spirit realm is eternal and permanent to begin with. It is forevermore, everlasting. <clears throat> Thank God. And finally, the poor have the gospel preached to them, and I think that we shouldn't complain about that, because if you had to buy it, you could never enter in. If it was up for sale, the billionaires would own it all. If it was a matter of real estate, the companies, the real estate companies would own every square inch, and you wouldn't stand a prayer. If it was possible to solve how God moves by intellect, all the high IQ college graduates in America would have all the technology in their computers. With God, it's no rhyme nor reason, no rule nor regulation as to how he's going to use you and work through you. It's the free enterprise system and it's up for grabs. Whosoever will, let him come first. Come first, serve. You pay the price. You can have anything you want out of the kingdom of God if you pay for it. The same way down at Sears and Robux. Say hallelujah. Oh, thank God. So today, God wants to use you. He will use you differently than he will use you. No two snowflakes are the same. Identical twins are actually different if you study them. God never duplicates and repeats himself. He's not in a rut. He's not in a rigmarole nor a routine. He's a God of variety. He's fresh every day. Just when you think you got him all figured out, he'll move backwards to show you. You don't know so much after all. Oh, if the devil knew what was going to happen next, he'd harden your heart so hard. God can do nothing. But when Jesus ministered, you never knew what was going to happen next. He preached two minutes and raised the dead, preached three minutes and uh, cleansed a leper, preached yes. ten seconds and healed the sick. Yes. He preached uh, an hour and rebuked a hypocrite. You just don't know what he's going to do next. 
Isn't that the truth? Therefore, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God, and there are six jumps ahead of the devil at all times. Therefore, because of confusion and uh, diversity, he jumps out the window. He cannot bind the mind and the soul no longer. Oh, aren't you happy? Aren't you glad for Jesus? I've enjoyed his word this morning. Are you getting a blessing? Then you must be free of offense. And just in case you're not free of offense, we're going to pray the first mass miracle prayer. Now, for souls, someone said, bless God, Brother Freddie, I'm, uh, I'm, I've been saved for a hundred years, or feel like I have. I could still pray for your soul. I could pray that God take all the offense out of it. That it might improve, it might increase. Just because you've received salvation don't mean you're making great progress lately. So-and-so was saved the other night. That's wonderful. Now you let so-and-so endure unto the end, and the same shall be saved, Jesus said. There's no stopping place in God. You cannot quit and sit down smugly and say, Here, I've got it, waiting for Jesus to come, warming my bench. The day you think you got it, it's the day you could lose it. Take heed when you stand, lest you fall, the Scripture said. Isn't that right? Oh, glory. So let us press on. The last mile of the way, remember the old song, The Last Mile of the Way? That's the portion of the highway that goes between the pearly gates. It's not until you're between the gates and lock them behind you that you can really start bragging and say, hey, I made it. Say so, amen. Isn't that true? In the meantime, we're walking on with faith, pilgrim making progress. Praying for souls, first of all, the first prayer, souls that may have had offense and you're a man and woman boy and girl enough to admit offense if you'll stand God will take the offense increase your soul's development and the blessing can come to you this morning that God wants to give you he wants to give everybody a blessing he has one with everybody's name on it but to receive it today according to the preaching you must be free from offense so it don't matter who's here whose hand you haven't shook for a while uh, who rubs you the wrong way or how the preaching aggravates you. Or how things frustrate you. And things that are a nuisance and an annoyance to you. Things you can hardly get the victory over are mental blocks to you. All these things are offenses. Everything that has ever frustrated or bothered you or affected you or hindered you in the least. It's time to just stand and release it. And God will take it. And your blessing will be forthcoming if you will. Everyone that has any kind of offense... Stand for my first prayer. Stand for my first prayer. And we'll pray. And God is going to take offenses out of your spirit so that blessings can come your way. If you are totally void and free of offense, don't bother standing. But if there is something that offends you in any way, bothers you in the least, you must stand now to be relinquished of it so that God's blessing can be poured upon you here this morning. Lift your hands up high and be ready. Lord, we pray in a mass miracle for all the people who stood. Loosen them. Set them free. And even now, wash them once more in the blood and remove every spot and blemish and take offense and extract every hindering force and factor. Pull it like a bad tooth. Extract it like a cavity. God, remove and take it now. Subtract it. Extract it. Oh, remove it. Take it away. Oh, flow and course and surge and move in a marvelous measure within everybody. Lord, take every offense. Oh, glory to God. There it goes. There they go. There they go. It doesn't take God 69 years to do something. He can do more in two seconds than you can in your whole lifetime. You can slave your life away and build yourself a shack. But if you get out of God's way, he'll build your mansion. Hallelujah. There it goes. It's gone. 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 All offenses are gone today. Hallelujah. Here comes the blessing now. The blessing's pouring out now. Oh, prove me now. He will accept the Lord if I won't open up your window in heaven and pour you out a blessing that you can't all even contain it. You can't stand it. Heaped up, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall it come from your bosom? Whoa, boy. Hallelujah.
Rolababomba Pialabahasta. Whoa, Boa. Wonderful Jesus. Whoa, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Raman Rakosabababahustria. Oh, glory. Rejoice that your offenses are gone. Rejoice that you're now being blessed. You're able to be blessed. Capable of being blessed. Whoa, glory. Thank God, thank God. Rakashkaya Bandre. Praise my God. Oh, how many knows your fences are gone? You've taken down all your fences. Oh, hallelujah. You're being blessed, are you? Then you must be free of offense or you wouldn't be blessed. I always say when I hear someone speak in tongues, I know they're cleansed because the Holy Spirit doesn't fall in an unclean temple. They got to be clean first or they won't be filled with spirit speaking tongues. So now, by the same token, you are free of offense, and you can be blessed for your being blessed. That proves your offenses are gone. Now you can say, I love the preacher. I love the deacon. I love the Sunday school teacher. I love the unlovely. I love those sinners outside these doors. Well, you need to try and reach them too. That's what's going to keep you healthy and alive. By giving away what you got, you keep what you got. Hoarding what you got, you lose what you got. Say that. Church is not a museum for saints. It's a hospital for lost souls. Let's always remember that. There is room at the cross for many more. We may not have room for many more in this church, but we can always be, beat out the back wall and add on. Say hallelujah. Wave your hand in glorious victory. Ooh, Glory be to Jesus. Thank God, thank God. Oh, yes, Lord. I love him because he first loved me. Now we're going to see a few more prayers of faith in the miraculous this morning. The first mass prayer was a success. All over the house, people got freed of offenses. Some say, I didn't see it happen. Well, you felt it happen to yourself. That's a miracle. You may not be able to prove that on paper to newspaper reporters and skeptics, but who cares? They're not going to receive anything from God anyhow, but you just have. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. This sister, would you come and stand, be the first to be prayed for? On the individual basis, she's the first to be prayed for. All of you were just prayed for on a mass basis. Who knows, we may pray more mass miracles for other things, but this first mass miracle was for freedom from offense. Hallelujah. God bless you, my sister. I've asked you to come out for prayer this morning because God wants to heal your body. And you want him to, don't you? Yes. And you've come to be healed? Yes. Take a step of faith. Hallelujah. Obedience will carry you deeper into the spirit, you see. Always obey. I believe I've lost her already. I'm going to try to get through to her. Hallelujah to God. Now, my little sister, look upon me just for a moment. I'm going to pray for you as I'm led to pray, okay? Yes. The first thing that you need healed in your body pertains onto your eyes and your vision in your eye. Yes. How long have you been suffering this? About 12 years, I guess. 12 years. Do you believe God can give you back your 2020? Yes. Someone said, don't tackle such big things to start with. There's nothing too big for God. It's all the same to God. Yes. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Secondly, my sister, you have suffered with your blood. Your blood is low, tired blood to you. Yes. You're exhausted, weak, weary. Sleep, 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 can't get rested. Right. You're actually anemic, and God's going to give you blood transfusion, miracle number two.
Oh, hallelujah. There's great faith here. I, I feel your faith. Again, I could stop there or I could pray for everything. Do you want me to stop or pray for everything? Everything. Everything. Thirdly, you have had difficulty in your spine, in your back. Is that true? Yes. You actually have a light curvature or scoliosis, according to a doctor's term. God's going to heal your back this morning. Hold on, there's more. Someone said, quit while you're ahead. Well, you get one thing straight through your head, and that is I'm way ahead of the devil and don't ever forget it. I know when I'm in the Holy Ghost, and I know when I'm not. Right now, I happen to know I'm in the Holy Ghost, and if you ever get yourself in a pickle someday, whether you get in a place where you don't know whether or not you're in the Holy Ghost, you're going to be in trouble. You should know the Spirit. Little sister, again, something troubles you right here in your lower stomach in the... Ab lower abdomen, the female organs of your body. It's almost like a contraction or a drawing that rises. Y you want the Lord to take it? Yes. You have again an allergy of skin, like a skin sensitivity, or it's like a dryness of skin. Is that what it is? Yes. Her skin allergy has the form of dryness. It's going to leave her. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Yes. I missed two things now. You get somewhat dizzy-headed in your head. That are light-headed swimming. Yes. And you're blocked through your sinus tract. Is that so? Yes. Huh? Yes. Observe the sinus opens first. It's open. Your skin is clenched. Anemic blood rise up. Let the curvature of the spine come out of it. Oh, she keeps the female contraction go back into place. Receive ye now 2020 vision in both eyeballs in thy sight. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody shout victory with her. Oh, thank God. Now, didn't it rain? Oh, hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Praise of my God. Ah, oh, hallelujah to God. Thank my God, yes. How many knows God did a work? Come of me and step of faith. Hallelujah to God. I want you to look out over the friendly folks who are waving at you. Have they come crisper and brighter to your eyes? I'm wearing contact lenses. Yeah? So I, yes. But they are brighter, and it might even be a little bit blurry now because of the lenses. You may have to pop them out. In your eyes, do you have the scratch in your eyelids any longer? The burning in the lids or the sand? No. I was going to tell you about your granulated lids, but they got shouting a little loud here. Bend over, check your back. Try again to find any kind of pain in it. No, no, no pain. How long have you suffered of your back? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Days, weeks, months? Well, not recently, but... You have uh -huh. had trouble with because of the curvature. Right. You bleed the curvature straight now. Breathe through your sinus. Is it open? It's clear. Uh -huh. Now, l let's observe this. Like a little warmth or a little warm heat has come through your body. I feel heat right in here. Press on it. No soreness in the female tract. No. Are you glad God healed your female yes. organ? Yes. You will not need surgery there now. Whoa, just a moment. Observe again a warmth all over your whole body. Just a little warmth from head to toe. That happens to be her new blood. 
And that particular sign has been with us for over 25 years in our ministry. The warm heat passing through the body has always been a sign of a blood transfusion. You know, whatever was wrong with the blood was corrected at that moment. Well, your anemic blood is healed now. That's that little warmth all over. Not that we need the sign. We'd believe it anyway. But the sign helps. Go on and admit it. It helps. Hallelujah. Praise my God. Now, you may have to get rid of those contacts. Everybody said it's real. It's real. The rest of you may be seated. I can't expect you to stand too long. Hallelujah. First of all, the Lord is touching your body physically this morning. First in your nerves. You've been going on your nerve and under stress. God is going to heal your nerves and heal your stress. You're going to learn how to come out from under stress. Secondly, you too have had a blur to the vision of your eyes. Yes, sir. Thirdly, you're a little bit concerned, though you do not speak out loud concerning it in your mind. You're a little bit concerned about blood pressure. Blood pressure runs in your family. Older folks in your family's had it. That's right. Your, the blood pressure in your family runs high. It's high blood as opposed to low. Yes, sir. Take a step of faith. Now, again, there's a little drawing that comes to your neck right here that makes it stiff at a spot in your neck. That's correct. It's going to leave your neck now. You have had off and on trouble through your stomach's digestion. It's like a light burning. It starts in your esophagus, and it works down and spreads. God's moving this. It has to do with heartburn indigestion that you get. Uh, by the way, you do not have an ulcer. Make you happy? Yes, sir. Glory to God. Everyone said, I love him. Glory to God. I want to make sure. Yeah, one more thing is across your lower spine here is a tight band. Yes, sir. And you suffered the most of it, and you wanted that healed this morning more than anything else. And you said, if this is of God, he will pray for the lower part of my back. That's correct. Did you say that? Yes, sir. That's just what he said. And he admitted that's what he said. Therefore, you're healed. Oh, glory to God. Oh, blessed be God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Let the hallelujahs roll. Oh, yeah. Glory. Praise God. He's on the operating table. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. Now, little girl in the red, stand right where you're at. Lift both your hands. You believe God will heal you now? Look upon me. The eye is the gate to the soul. If your eye is single, your body's full of light. If your eye is evil, your body's full of darkness. Her eye is single, however, her body's full of light. So much light, as a matter of fact, in a moment, it's going to explode and heal her. Hallelujah. <laughs> you have been battling with your nerves. With your nerves. You have a new set. There they are. You have oft times been all thumbs dis coordinated, confused, spirit of confusion stays on you. You can't make a decision. Small things in the house drive you all to pieces. You feel like almost pulling your hair out. God has healed your nerves. That's all it is, is your nerves. They're healed. Now step to the aisle. Glory oh, to God. Oh, glory. You've had a fullness and sensitivity in your throat here. It's gone. You too have had a light allergy upon your skin. It breaks out in various parts of your skin. Is that true? It's healed. 
you've been bothered with something right through there in your lower abdomen. It's in your female tract. You're worried about it. It's in the uterus. Also goes to the ovary, the right ovary. God heals your ovary and the womb. Oh, hallelujah to God. Nerves, peace, be still. Oh, hallelujah to God. All will be to God. Now, Paul's gospel came in the power and the demonstration. Is that right? When he got through preaching, he demonstrated it. He not only demonstrated it and prayed the prayer of faith, but he proved the things he did or prayed for. He said in 1 Thessalonians 5, Prove all things. Lay your hand on your back. Feels good. Now, I knew when you hit the floor, you either broke your back or you get a new back. <laughs> Bend forward. Check. Don't bother you to do that. No, sir. Now, look at the friendly folks waving at us. Praise God. They have Thank come you, just a little clearer to the eye. Praise God. Yes, sir. Really? Yes, sir. Now, how long had your vision been blurring on you? Oh, for years and years. I wear glasses. Yeah, but it has brightened. It's cleared up some. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And there's like a relaxation or receding out of the head area, which is the best I can explain to you that your blood pressure is down to normal. Thank God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Would you try your neck now and see if you find the stiffness in it? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Any there? None there. Go in peace. Faith has made you whole. And don't feel bad about your stiff neck. There's a lot of stiff neck folks in Granite City, Illinois. Yours is only physical. We could help you. It's the spiritual stiff neck she can't do nothing with. Say amen. Little sister in the bow tie, I want you to come. We'll pray for you next. You want Jesus to heal you? Yes. Glory to God. First of all, you have a light, slight sinus condition in your head. You have told people, oh, my migraine is bothering me today. It is not migraine at all. It is sinus. That's all it is. You understand? Yes. God is going to clear it, cleanse it. Secondly, in your throat, you have a fullness, like a choking. It's a tiny lump. Thus saith the Lord to this lump, dissolve, swallow now. You swallowed it. Come. Something just snapped in your leg when you took that step. Did you feel that? I didn't notice. I just, I just heard it snap. You hear that? Okay. You've been a little stiff in your joints. It's arthritis of the first stage. Yes. When that snap came, that's when it left you. <laughs> You've also been dizzy-headed, dizzy spells. Is that true? Yes. Now, would you swallow again and see if you can find the lump now? No, sir. How long had you had the lump in your throat? I wasn't aware of it, but I take thyroid. That's what it was, thyroid. But nothing feels full in there? No, sir. Your thyroid is here. The thyroid inactivity is what overactivity is what created the lump thyroid glands out of whack give you goiters is that right she's free of that now you want everything god has for you now, i know you're wearing glasses but there's been a floater like a floater been coming over your eye you keep wiping it off and it keeps drifting across your eye again we're going to wipe them off for good this time okay <laughs> What shall we do with them? Nobody wants souvenirs? Thank God, thank God. You want me to pray for everything? 
I could quit there, but you're not satisfied, are you? There's a spot right there on your back. Is that right? It's gone. It's a vertebrae. <laughs> Hallelujah. She's happy. <laughs> Everybody say, thank God for new vertebrae. Thank God for deliverance from thyroid medicine. And again, oft times like a heaviness in your chest, like a hand squeezing on the left side of your chest, it's over your heart. Right. You have difficulty sleeping on the left arm at night. You sleep on the right side of your body. I have trouble with my shoulder. You're going to sleep on it tonight, and from now on, every night, it will be healed. Everybody said, thank God it's God. Whoa, glory to God. Woo. I keep making them take a step of faith. It takes them deeper into the spirit when you obey God. And once deep in the spirit, God can do most anything for you there. Swing your left arm round and round like a windmill. Be not afraid. Put it right on out there. Oh, my. You don't feel any pain? No, sir. Huh? No, sir. You're healed? Praise the Lord. Sleep on this side from now on. You have a ministry. You have a ministry. It is a prayer ministry. God has called you to intercessory prayer, and you're going to increase in it. Increase mightily in it. In great travail, thou shalt bring forth children in the kingdom, in the spirit. You understand? Yes. Susan. Who is Susan? I'm Sue. You're Sue? Yes. Well, your name is recorded as a mother in Israel, Sue, <laughs> to do intercessory prayer. <laughs> Blessed be God. Everyone said, thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Wonderful, wonderful God. Rabbanu kohoshan. Man. Get ready for God to heal you. Can I get some of that guy? What? Yes, come on, you shut. She's speaking in tongues. I have the interpretation. She wants to be healed. Oh, yeah. Granny, listen to me now. First of all, your blood pressure moves on you, goes high. Yes. It's incurable by a doctor, but yours is cured by the great physician. Yes. I'm in Joran Grammy's case. Uh, you want me to pray for everything? Yes. I could have prayed for one thing. It wouldn't have been wonderful for her to be healed of blood pressure, but it's not necessary. God's not bankrupt. He's not exhausted. He's not tired. He's not over the barrel. Uh, he's got plenty to spare. Gra Gra Grammy, and right through there, you've been suffering. Cross your stomach. You almost, well, you need corrective surgery there corrective surgery but you'll receive it this morning in church right to right to your gallbladder yes is that right yes you still have the gallbladder yes it's you know it's about shot well now it's being made whole now grammy Again, in your lower back, look here, in the corners, it gets sore, these corners. It's over your kidneys, your kidney. Yes. You knew that? Yes. Kidney condition runs in your family. They have had stones, kidney stones. Yours is not stones. It's just like little flecks of sand, like little gravel. It's going to purify. Tomorrow morning, you shall not wake up with the burning in your bladder because your bladder is healed thank you jesus gallbladder is healed two kidneys are replaced blood pressure's down and the last thing that bothers you is a kind of a little butterfly right there it's it's a what pacemaker excuse me the butterfly is a pacemaker 
It looked to me like a butterfly. Listen. I come on and throw shit. his heart without the butterfly. Without the pacemaker. Hallelujah. Be corrected. Gallbladder surgery. Made whole. Heal her bladder. Blood pressure's down. A probable shriar. Everybody said it's down. Whoa, yes, Lord. Whoa, blessed be God. Woo.